Good morning. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, and more importantly, happy Super Roll Sunday. We've got a lot of donations in for the food shelf of all sorts of paper products on rolls, so you can continue to bring those in throughout this week. Uh, it's a great help to serving our community around us. YAP and mentor meetings today. YAP right after worship. Uh, mentor meeting will be at 1145. If you can come at that time, please. And then it's also Lay Ministry Sunday. So I'm going to ask the lay ministry board to stand, please. Our members are Kelly Tufto, Carly Wager, Sharon Vick, Ryan Stotesbury, Maggie Madsen, Ann Borstad, and Tony Offit. So we can give them a round of applause. Thank you for all the work that you do on lay ministry and the internship committee, and thank you again for giving me good grades. So. <laughs> There is a special offering today for Faith Johnson, who's going on her uh, mission trip to Mexico. You can read about that in the bulletin. We'll be co collecting that offering uh, through today. Just remember to make a note on your check for that. Confirmation retreat is happening. It's on next week, uh, Sunday, Monday at Chatech. So we're excited. We've got most of the kids going out to that as well. The radio and online services are given in memory of Bob and Derek Tweet from Betty Tweet. The bulletins are given in memory of Dan Olenkamp's birthday on February 12th from Elaine and family. And then the flowers are given in memory of Butch Anderson's birthday today from Kevin and Julie Brent and family. With that, that's all our announcements. So you can stand as you are able, greet those around you, say hello to the people joining us online. We'll continue with worship. Continue with our confession and forgiveness as printed in your bulletin. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do, turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And before we continue to the readings, I'll, um, I'm going to share a special word so you can be seated as we continue. Last week, I gave an open invitation to the congregation to uh, anyone to offer a testimony to how these, they've seen God working in their lives. I gave the example of how Virgil Thompson, for his 90th birthday a few weeks ago, gave a short little testimony. Uh, 
and I, I thought this was a good idea for us to, to grow deeper in faith together and to encourage one another to, to see where God is doing things in the community. And so I've not had any volunteers take me up on the offer yet, so I'll continue to, to talk to some of you throughout the week and encourage you to think about this, but I figured I would give a testimony myself for a couple minutes here before we continue with worship. So I had planned to share an encounter at first that I had here at Grace during the winter clothing drive just a few weeks ago. I, I thought it was a, a neat way to talk about something happening in this community, but then I was at a Bible study yesterday and was asked to share a, an aha moment in my faith journey. And obviously before I, I came to Grace and um, I felt God saying that this would be a good thing to share, share with the community, so that's what I went with. So this big aha moment for me in the, in the life of my faith so far came during the end of high school. It was my junior or senior year. I was raised in the church, as you, as you know, and I was given a solid faith formation, uh, but faith wasn't particularly important to me at that time. I, it was just another thing that you did. You know, you went to church on most Sundays, and you went to faith formation classes on Wednesdays, you know, said your prayers before bed, and and before meals, tried to be a good person. But it was just another thing. In other words, it was another box to check on the list of things to do in life. Right? It was another thing just like doing my homework, just like uh, going to work as a part-time cashier or going to track practice or, or cleaning my room, going to school. I mean, it was just another thing that you did to be a good person. I was an ambitious kid in high school, though, I think, so I was always getting involved in more things, and part of that was more church things. And so I eventually found myself at a young adult worship service called Revive at a, a local Lutheran church. And it was one of those Thursday nights that, I kid you not, changed my life forever. And I, I can't even tell you the exact content of the sermon that was given that day. But what I can tell you is I remember exactly how I felt. I felt convicted, and I felt new. At the same time, I felt both convicted and new. All at the same time, I felt an invitation to a relationship with God. A real relationship, not just another thing to do. And in the weeks and months that followed that framework of church and faith being just another box to check on the list of things to do changed. It shifted. Faith just wasn't just another box to check off, but it actually colored the entire page. It brought everything else to life. It wasn't just a religion, a thing to do, but a relationship with Jesus. A relationship with the living God. And that affected how I interacted from that day on with all the other things on that list of things to do in life. So I don't know, maybe you've had a sort of, of aha moment, a sort of conversion to deeper faith in your life. A time you experience God and faith in a new and fresh way. Or maybe you've had a story of an encounter of, with God that that proved God's presence and God's providence in an unmistakable way. Whatever it is, I extend the invitation to you to consider sharing that in order to bless this community, in order to bless your brothers and sisters in Christ around you. So please, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're thinking about that, don't, don't hesitate to, to stop in or, or give the church a call. I'd love to ch chat more about that, how you might share something and, and what you might share. With that, we will turn to our readings. Our lector this morning is Kelly Tufto. Good morning. Our first reading is from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path the sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, 
which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, by the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 20. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not, has not been raised, your faith is futile, futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead and the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Please stand. gospel for this morning is taken from St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place, and a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at the disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what the ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Well, I'm going to change the text uh, slightly, and then uh, uh, this morning's uh, uh, passage uh, that I just read, and then I, I want you to see um, if you can maybe just pick out what part of this text uh, that, that I'm going to read uh, wasn't part of the actual sermon that Jesus gave from Luke. So see if you can pick out the part that's not in the Bible, okay? Here we go. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and the smart people came to him. And the beautiful people and the rich people and the people with thick, non-gray hair came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Blessed are you, you smart, you pretty, you rich, you well-prepared people. 
for yours is the kingdom of God. So did anybody pick out the part that's actually not in the Bible there? Yeah. Here's what the Bible actually says. This is right before the Sermon on the Plain that Luke tells us. A great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. So Jesus went throughout Galilee, and he's teaching in the synagogues, and he's proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And he's healing every illness and every frailty among the people. And the news about him spread all over the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those who were suffering those who were in pain, those who were demon-possessed, those who had unclean spirits, those who were having seizures, those who were paralyzed. And Luke tells us that Jesus healed them all. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, Luke tells us, for power came out from Jesus and he healed all of them. So who's in the crowd? Well, I'll tell you who's in the crowd. In the crowd, we find the needy people. We find the poor people. We find the hurting people. We find the people who don't smell good, people who don't behave well. Demoniacs are usually not noted for their good behavior. We're Lutherans, always well-behaved, so you might not know that demoniacs are not well-behaved people. But the truth is, in these crowds, uh, uh, people were poor and people were hungry. People were having grand mal seizures. Lepers are there whom nobody would touch. There were people in the crowd who drank too much, people who couldn't hold down a job, people who couldn't fix their lives, people who had no money for medicine, people who were on the edge, on the very edge of life, people who had no hope. That's who was in the crowds. So how will Jesus tell the good news to the people who are in the crowd? How will Jesus tell the good news to this motley crew? Well, this most famous talk in the history of the world, the greatest sermon that was ever preached in the history of the world, had the most famous beginning for a sermon ever. And although it's widely misunderstood, Jesus begins, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let's just start with that word, blessed. That's the yay, Jesus is saying, right? Yay are the blessed, not woe are the blessed, but yea here are the blessed. Jesus goes on and he offers some woes, but the first word of this great sermon is blessed. Blessed are you. And I think it's often cliche in our day. We, we say it when somebody does what? Sneezes, right? We, we say, well, bless you, right? In parts of our country, people say it about people they don't even like. They say, well, God bless her heart. And what they really mean is I can't stand her guts, is what that <laughs> translates down in the South, right? That's what that means. But in the Bible, this word blessed actually addresses a question that haunts the human heart. Who has the good life? And who is well off in this life? And any serious thinker about the human condition must address this question. The biggest movement, I think, now in psychology, for the la- at least for the last two decades, has been what's called positive psychology. Research on happiness, research on 
well-being, research on what makes us flourish. And that is precisely about this question, who has the good life? And everybody has an idea of who has the good life. I mean, sometimes you'll be sitting in the backyard of your home, not in the wintertime, but maybe in the summertime, and, and you'll, or you'll be by the lake, not in the wintertime, but maybe in the summertime, you'll be by the lake or by the pool, and maybe your feet will be up in the lounge chair, and you'll look around, and you'll ask each other. It's like a, it's like a little family liturgy, right? And you'll say, well, how are you doing? Well, how am I doing? Well, I'm living the dream, Right? I got my feet up, I'm by the lake, I'm living the dream. So who's living the dream? Who's living the dream? You really have to think about that phrase when you come to this word blessed that Jesus says. Who's living the dream? Blessed are the poor. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. None of these conditions listed in the Beatitudes are thought of by our world as tickets to the good life, are they? Being poor, being hungry, weeping, mourning. And this is precisely why Jesus mentions them. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the hungry, blessed are the weeping. The idea of these blessings is no human condition excludes blessedness now that Jesus is on the scene. No human condition excludes blessedness now that Jesus is in the equation, that Jesus is in our lives. So Jesus is contrasting his beatitudes against who the world says is eligible for the good life. Who does the world, apart from God, say is living the dream? Well, human culture, apart from God, has always had its own list of who's blessed, who's living the dream. We might write the beatitudes for our own understanding of our day. Blessed are the talented, right? Blessed are the CEOs, blessed are the VIPs, blessed are the MBAs, blessed are the PhDs, blessed are the thin and the good-looking and the wealthy, blessed are the slender, blessed are the LinkedIn and the Twitter or the TikTok followed, we might say. Then all the people who are not on that list think, well, then I'm not eligible, evidently for this good life. I'm missing out. But Jesus comes to say, no, the world has it wrong. The world has it wrong. Some of you know this, but in the year 2000, which at least in my mind isn't that long ago, but in the year 2000, a couple of Silicon Valley engineers had an argument about the attractiveness of women. And they started an attractiveness rating website. Some of you know this, I, I know. And they called this website Hot or Not. That's what they called it, Hot or Not. And it inspired a similar site at Harvard, Harvard called Face Mash that eventually got named Facebook, right? Facebook. But hot or not, within a week, hot or not was getting two million hits a day. And what happened in this website is that you could just post a picture of yourself, and then people would rate how attractive you are on that website. And then the ratings were rank ordered, and then they were posted publicly. And everybody knew what was behind this, right? Blessed are the hot. Yay for the hot, right? Woe to the not. No wonder our world is so messed up and silly. Can you believe this? This site became popular. I want to tell you this 
One of the reasons why Alcoholic Anonymous, which began, did you know, began as a discipleship movement, it grew out of what was initially called a movement of first century discipleship, AA. And one of the reasons it's so powerful is anytime somebody would talk, they begin with, and you know this, they would say, hi, my name is Kendall and I'm an alcoholic. That's what they would say. And the other people in the circle do not respond by saying, well, I'm shocked by that. I can't believe that. I'm appalled that you would actually say that you're an alcoholic. What do people in AA say when they make that confession? They say, hi, Kendall. (laughs) They say, hello. And the wisdom of AA is contained in its celebration of an addict's recognition and public acknowledgement that he is an addict. And such a recognition and acknowledgement is deemed as an achievement and it is to be celebrated by being ritualized and then reiterated over and over and over again, right? You don't say it once. I am an alcoholic, or I was an alcoholic, you say it over and over and over again. And what does the community say that gathers around you? Hi. Hello. It turns out that genuine, humble, costly, real-time public admission of my inadequacy, my ability not to be able to change myself, that I can't do it by myself, my inability to control my own life, to resist sin, is part of what God uses to actually change us and to bless us. AA. It's just like church, right? Because you offered your confession this morning. And we didn't say, we didn't turn and say, oh, I'm appalled by that. I'm astonished that you could actually confess your sin. What in essence do we say? Hello. Hello, Bob. Hello, Ann. Hello, Virgil. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Kendall. You're in a community that's just like you. So instead of hot or not, instead of how we generally think of blessedness, what Jesus is assuring us, you and me, that our status before God is not based on appearances. It's not based on what our life looks like right now, whether good or bad. So if you are mourning, if you are hungry, If you are poor, that is not the final verdict that God is against you. And if you are rich, if you're doing well right now, that is also not the final verdict of your status before God. In Jesus' day, it would have been assumed that if someone was rich, they were blessed by God, that they were righteous. If someone was not, that was evidence that they did not have God's favor. That was common in Jesus' day. In other words, you could tell by looking at someone, you could tell by looking at someone's life whether they were righteous, whether they were blessed, whether they were hot or not. And so Jesus looks straight into our eyes. Jesus looks into every one of us who grieves Every one of us who mourns, every one of us who struggles, every one of us who is down and out, every one of us who is weak, every one of us who has nowhere else to go and says, you're blessed. You are blessed. Blessed are you, Jesus says. Do not judge by what you see. Do not judge yourself. Do not judge others by what you see. Judge by my word, Jesus says, by my promises to you, Jesus says. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. 
So I thought we could just maybe practice this a moment. So I thought maybe you could turn to the person next to you and just say this to them. Without God, my life is a wreck. Turn to the person next to you and just say that. Without God, my life is a wreck. But with God, I am blessed. Can you say that? But with God, I am blessed. And more important to the person sitting next to you, maybe you could say, with God, you are always blessed. Please stand as you're able as we confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. These are the words of our shared faith, the, the reason that we're blessed, that we have a God who created us, who came for us, and who continues to come to us in the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of a new kingdom, we praise and thank you that this kingdom that you may come is not one of this world, but one of true freedom, where we are not defined by things like our wealth or reputation or other appearances. Help us to believe that we are only defined by your wealth and your reputation by the riches of your love and the glory of your holy name. Let this kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy. 
blessed Jesus. In calling us blessed, you invite us still to a deeper faith. You invite us to follow you more fully. Cast out any and all fear that prevents us from taking the next step out in faith. Free us from the fear of being judged by others. Free us from the fear of losing things we hold dear. And free us from the fear of lacking anything. Teach us to know that we have everything in you. Lord, in your mercy. Steadfast spirit, the suffering of your people and body and spirit continues. Fill with your loving and healing presence the following members of our congregation. Greg Tokolke, Clarice Olson, Jack Flayton, Jim Anderson, Tom Beals, Ken Club, Monica Kennedy, Brad Madsen, Lauren Thone, Judy Miron, Joey Anderson Ernest, John Perry Peterson, Mike Thompson, Asher Fierkenstad, Ken Menning, Christy Peterson Thomas, Ann Hegg, Aurora Bukowski, Wiley Wiebe, Rick Oden, Jeff Moe, Randy Tenson, Remy Schuler, Arliss Buer, Doug Breberg, Evelyn Lundgren, Linda Tollickson, Madeline Wilton Gustafson, Lucille Williams, Deb Trapp, Joy Winningstad, Bob Pearson, and the family of Brian Hayden. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend all these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together the words of the offertory prayer as printed in your bulletin. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ who is your light made manifest to all the nations. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and love. And then we, rem we remember together on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And you may be seated as you prepare your hearts for uh, Holy Communion. We invite you to sing the Lamb of God. The words are uh, printed for you in your bullet.
Would the congregation please rise as you're able? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and always. Amen. And let's bow our heads in prayer together. Most gracious and generous God, you open your hand and you feed those who hunger. Grant us faith to trust your wise, providing courage to share our bread and grace to pour out our lives in service to others as Christ poured out himself to us. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, serve the Lord.